welcome to Incredible Mike Life. This is webinar 11. We have done 10 webinars till now. It all started on June 7th when we had the first Mike Life, and the idea was to just know about the Mike Life. And we had some 29 Mike Lights who have already come in. So it's a great gesture and a, and, and a, and a great support from all the alumni as well. Uh, I would, before uh, welcoming the delegates, uh, the panelists with us, let me welcome Amber sir. Amber sir is the co-moderator with me and he knows the school better than anyone else. And in today's 11th webinar, the incredible Mike Lights we have is an eminent lawyer, Mr. Vikas Singh, 1975. We have got a corporate HR leader, uh, Mr. Prabir Jha, 1985. And we have got a performing officer, Mr. Amitabh Prasad, IANAS, 1990. So, the flow of the event starts. We will go to the school era with Amber Sir and we will talk about the school memories, the anecdotes. Then we'll come to the professional end of it and then we'll talk how have these people have actually made different to the world. So let's start. Ambassador, over to you on the school side of it. Thank you. Thank you, Nishan. And what an incredible idea that you have floated actually by the name of Incredible Mike Light. Thank you once again. So as is the practice, uh, Amitabh and Prabir, with your permission, I'll begin with the senior most, okay? And that is Mr. Vikas Singh, 1975 batch. So I have your permission, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, thank you. So welcome, uh, Vikas, 1975 batch. So when did you actually, you know, take admission in uh, St. Michael's and who was the principal and uh, what would be your earliest memories and which class did you actually take admission in? So I was, uh, I joined in, in the fifth uh, standard and uh, Father Murphy was the principal. This was in 69, uh -huh. until before, before that I was in uh, DPS Mathura Road, Delhi. So when my father got transferred from Delhi to Patna, I joined uh, Michael straight away because that was the transition year. In any case, people were transiting from uh, Xavius to Michael. So I joined straight away as a Michaelite. And uh, one of the uh, very, very strong memories which remained in my mind is uh, the library that Father Cox used to have. And, you know, he never used to look towards the books when we used to enter the room. And we had to uh, pick up our books and keep back our books and he never even saw whether you kept back what you had taken last time and if, if you're, or you, I'm sure all of you, I mean, you, Ambar sir, you will remember, I don't know whether the others would have had this experience because he wasn't there for very long, but that was one great experience. Then of course, uh, Raj, Sir Raj, um, our maths teacher, he was only another, uh, you know, sort of a legend, I would say, and a great teacher. Uh, a great human being. Uh, we connected with him till very recently. He died recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we connected even then. So these these are two, three, you know, uh, people whom I, I just can't forget. Of course, there are so many. Uh, it may not be possible to name all of them today. But uh, these two people I particularly remember as somebody who definitely made a very important mark in my life. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Vikash. And uh, what is very important is that you came in 1969 when the Jesuit fathers had just taken over after the merger of the school. So we came over to St. Michael's also in 1969. All right. I was in class nine and you must have been in class uh, five at, the, at, at that time. All right. Now, uh, were you, you were a day scholar, I presume? Yes, I was a day scholar. Uh, yes, yes. So I, mean, I, used like, cycle, I used to cycle down from Boring Canal Road. Which was about and a half. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was not a hard grind. That used to be a very pleasant grind, actually, in those days. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so I, yes, Father Cox's library was much more popular than the main library in St. Michael's in that sense. Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. of the personal interest that Father Cox used to take and would recommend us books and, you know, yeah. Um, Apart from your, I mean, like, you know, being in school and with academics and so on, what were your other interest areas, um, Vikas? I mean, like, did you play any game or did you take part in any of the extracurricular activities and so on? So I was a tennis player. So I used to play tennis. I, um, uh, in the finals, I lost to, in that last year, I lost to Jitain Singh, I remember. And uh, one of the reasons I used to always beat him in practice, but the <laughs> final day, 
his whole kuladiya khandan was there so there were about 20 25 spectators of his family watching and there was nobody from my family so that probably was a, had, having some kind of an overbearing effect but i used to play a lot of tennis and uh, mostly of course i used to play at the new patna club but of course uh, the, the school tournament and playing once in a while in the school also used to be uh, definitely in my agenda do you play a bit of tennis in new patna club also later on yes of mm. course i mean i i kept on playing tennis till i was in patna which is i i after that i joined the science college and from science college also used to play at uh, new patna club and in fact i've been playing even now so that is something which i have been able to maintain oh that's great and played a lot of tennis all over the world because i was president of the international lawn tennis club for quite some time so in that capacity i traveled all over the world was invited at the wimbledon international box french uh, president's box at the french open so did a lot of uh, playing tennis all over the world and played at some very Uh, uh, Fantastic! Fantastic. That's super. That's wonderful. The tennis is very close to my heart, you know. Apart from cricket, okay, that's wonderful. And one last question about school is: I mean, like, did you from school uh, days itself? I mean, did you really f- feel uh, at that point of time uh, that you are going to take up law, all right, uh, in your higher studies and become, uh, you know, a lawyer? And, and then, of course, an incredible lawyer at that. Well, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, in school I had not decided, but uh, I had got the exposure of the legal profession while I was still in school. Because my tennis mate Jitain Singh, Chupu Singh, his father used to be the uh, Chief Justice in Patna High Court, and we were very, very close. So I used to go to his house and see the Chief Justice's bungalow, and you know, so that that because in my family there was no lawyer. No, you know, no lawyer, no judge. So I had no inkling of what this profession was all about from my own family side. So that is the exposure that I got, and probably sometime in college I decided that I will become a lawyer and study law. So okay. that, that came a little later. Right, that's great. Which means, you know, for you, uh, becoming a lawyer or opting for a legal profession was like, you know, in the family it was a more of a thinking out of the box. Okay, so that makes you, you know. Uh, A really incredible Mike Light, and we know all that you are doing at the moment, you know, and how well you have done. All right, thank you so much, Vikas. You know, and I really enjoyed your cycling and tennis memories in particular. Thank you so much. Right now, we, with your permission, I'll move on to uh, Prabir. All right. So, welcome, Prabir. Hi, yes, sir. Prabir was my student, and what a student he was. Oh, mind-boggling. mind boggling what did he not achieve at that time i mean number one if i remember correctly prabir you were a very i would say focused student all right never taking any sort of pride in not listening to the the teachers or not or or or, or, or flouting you know any rule or regulation always pick and span okay even your smile and your laughter is you you know used to be very much within that permissible i would say you know limits and so on i mean you never that was great and i still remember uh, prabir you were a fantastic speaker all right you were a great um uh, uh, dramatist and also i remember you know uh, miss mari and other teachers with you and we didn't have to really train you much you were a born elocutionist okay so prabir could you just you know take us down memory lane All right. In fact, I I would be watching. All right. You will be going down memory lane, and you were a part of you know the memory lane. You know, as far as I am concerned, as a young teacher at that time. So all about your academics and your co-curricular activities, and some fantastic memories. You know, of teachers, your friends, uh, and your achievements in an all-round achievements. All right. As far as uh, Sir Michael was concerned, and as far as Prabir was concerned. Over to you, Prabir. It's all yours. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, and uh, you know, I still remember you joining school, and and what an inspiration you were. You were the younger among the younger teachers, and uh, your YOGA was one part of the story. And uh, but yes, you were also a, a, a teacher of literature, a subject that has always been very dear to me. But uh, just to flash back, uh, 1979, I joined St. Michael's when my father mm-hmm. was posted. He was in the IPS. He got posted in 
And from Dinobli, uh, Digwadi in Dhanbad, I moved to St. Michael's. And uh, Father Harland was uh, the principal at that time. And, uh, and of course, in my time, I saw three uh, 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 principals, Father Harland, then Father Karthanam, and Father Augustine okay. by the time I left. It was almost like political governments coming in and going out. <laughs> so, but uh, I went through a fair bit of that. And uh, so when I look back, uh, sir, at school, apart from your right, you know, I was a little more right of center. I don't have, unfortunately, uh, stories of sneaking away for a smoke or, you know, putting chewing gum under someone's chair. I don't think I did that. I was quite right of center. Uh, and uh, while uh, academically God was kind, I did well. My parents never had a bad PTA meeting, if I remember right, uh, when I was a good boy. Uh, but the uh, high point was when uh, I ended school in my 12th uh, as an All India topper, as a four pointer. Uh, and humanities, uh, stopping, humanities, top humanities. In India. I, I opt, top I in opted, India. That's right. And I opted for humanities after my 10th. And, uh, you know, since you asked Mr. Vikas Singh, did you think of being a lawyer at that time? Uh, you know, I thought I was very focused. I knew that I wanted to go to St. Stephen's, do history honors, write the civil services. Although in a scan interview before, as I was leaving, uh, someone had uh, asked me a question, what do you want to be? And at that time I'd said, otherwise journalism or maybe law, because I had a sharp mind and I had a way with words and I thought it was a good field, but I played safe when I look back. So that is what happened. And, uh, you know, in school, uh, yes, there was a lot of elocution, Hindi and English. I remember going with uh, Miss Mari McDonald for the inter-Jesuit uh, elocution to uh, St. Joseph's Darjeeling, uh, representing the school. A uh, lot of active quizzing, you know. Uh, and I remember people like Surajit Roy and I, we would run quizzes. We would act as a, a quiz masters, very active in Patna Circle. So my brothers, who were also Michaelites, uh, outstanding quizzers. Nitish, you know, in fact, I remember seeing the scanned copy. I was today hunting for it. This has got Nitish and Shamal, who was a year after me, okay. and me uh, winning uh, one of our uh, inter school quiz contests. Nitish was in my class. And, uh, you know, so I, I remember a lot of quizzing, a lot of elocution, a lot of drama. I remember we did Elegant Edward and Fezal Alam. Uh, we were in the Gold House. He was the best actor, he was the best supporting actor. And, uh, I played a bit of cricket, cricket, sir, but it was it ended hey, right. with, at house level, at house level, so that I okay. put the caveats up front. All and right. we had Saba on the show, so Saba and I were in the same house. And I still remember, you know, the little moments of of ego kick that I've had, you know, <laughs> on the sports field. You know, academics and all that was fine, but in the sports field, so he and I opened the innings for the Gold House because that's the mm -hmm. only way. I, and so far, I went. And Saba, I remember, said. You are the senior partner. You take strike, right? <laughs> and Saba was the non-striker. I think only one thing. He says, probably just get onto the non-striker's end. Rest I will manage. So my yeah. only job was not to lose my wicket and get Saba to bat and see him play. That was all that I did. So I had great moments with him. Uh, we were very fortunate to have some uh, uh, wonderful friends. I still remember Satyajit Jha, who is still uh -huh. in touch with me. Uh, and uh, uh, a very versatile guy. Uh, Surajit, I talked about Braj Kishore Mishra, who is also a lawyer, I think, so because we have uh, known him. Of course, I know him. Yeah, yeah. Of so Braj was my classmate, and and it also happened that some of them went with uh, with me uh, to Stevens, so that relationship uh, continued. Uh, but uh, he's another uh, guy I remember, Nitish, Amitabh Tripathi. So in my own class of humanities, many of them uh, joined like me the civil services, you know, in some batch or the other after I finished. But uh, I defected, sir, of course, as you know, and we'll talk about that maybe later. And uh, I remember Father Drynan. Uh, I remember uh, Mayor of Castlebridge. I still remember the lines, you know, happiness is but an occasional episode in the general drama of pain. I remember uh, Kane Mishra, sir, you know, uh, uh, taught us Hindi. And I, one line from a play, which is still, you know, and I've used this in a lot of my coaching, a lot of my advising. Uh, it's a line, it was set in the context of dowry, but it's such a powerful line. And uh, yeah. I remember uh, Mishra sir teaching us, and he says, Pitaji, itna bhi na chuko, ki utna hi bhul jau, kyunki yeh dunia chukne walo ko aur chukati hai. So, you know, I mean, it's, there's so many little Wonderful. stories. Mrs. Carr was such a, uh, a favorite teacher of mine, oh, when I would write all my uh, versions of answers of economics and go and get her to correct. Mari McDonald, I talked about Mr. Lal, also not only was he a teacher of mine, but he was also of the moderator of Quiz Club. Prabhat, who was on your show, he's our ambassador in Kazakhstan. You know, uh, 
very close quizzing associate of mine, Pramath again, who was on the show. I was mm -hmm. his grand successor in uh, uh, as the editor of Scan. So a lot of fond memories from the blue uh, blue bus. Still, I was in the tenth, and then cycling like Mr. Vikas Singh from Buddha Colony, Boring Canal Road through Rajapur uh, Pool all the way and back like a good boy straight uh, straight home. And back, so yeah. very fond memories and uh, and what friends and what relationships and most important. Uh, the value of humility, the value of, uh, you know, focus is what I will always be grateful to school for. I think, uh, you know, our destinations and our roots have varied, sir, but I honestly believe everyone who's an alum is an incredible Michaelite. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's so wonderful to just of have course, this love for humanities uh, in the genes as well comes from your very respected mom as well. Because, you know, uh, I'm very proud that, you know, I taught you, I taught your brother. And then for a little while, I was your mom's colleague in the Narbanga house. Yes, I know. For a short I, while before I, I came over to St. Michael's. That's and right. she, you know, like she had a lot of, a lot of uh, affection for me. And, uh, the, and I remember the PTMs also. And of course, Prabir, of course, was somebody, you know, I said, what would I talk about Prabir? Okay, so... I mean, like, if, I mean, uh, his, uh, Prabhi's mom would just, you know, I would ask him, Masi, but ho gaya apka? But that's more than enough. I mean, he's, he's already, you know, his, his, his papers are uh, manifestation of what he is. So thank you, Prabhi. And uh, yes, and what about, what about the casual library? I mean, like, did you make full use of it? Yes, like I did. Said? Of course. I mean, and uh, Father Cox was always an institution in my house because... My mamas knew him when he it was St. Xavier's and my cousins who passed out in the 70s, uh, you know. So it was uh, an inheritance of sorts. And I have the same memories. I remember as one of the earlier uh, incredible Michaelites had shared in a, on a session, a loan is not a gift. I still remember that being stamped. And I did uh, re uh, do a fair bit of reading uh, yeah. at that time. And... Uh, and those were great memories and little little stories that, you know, the way he would knock. I still remember his hair. You know, he had a very, very lush, uh, you know, hair and, and big and pearly. So, uh, no, so very fond memories of, uh, of the library. And, uh, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed school. In fact, so right. when I look back, I tell a lot of people that more than uh, the academics and the grades and all that, which is a bonus, what actually perspective uh, is uh, really how you invest in building yourself up. Mm -hmm. You know, your persona, your self-confidence. And you'll be proud to hear in, at the UPSC, you know, I had the highest marks in the UPSC interview. And I always joke till today, I've never gone for a job interview and not clicked and not cleared it. And a lot of credit would come to the, the way Michael's actually got me that confidence that, you know, you ask me the question, I can, I, I can spin, I can think on my feet. So Wonderful. thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. In fact, uh, uh, you know, like... It was very, you know, we were lucky to have, you know, students like you. Okay. Thank you so, so I mean, much. We were very lucky. We were blessed. Uh, before I come to um, uh, Amitabh, Samrat Amitabh, I call him. Amitabh will explain why I call him <laughs> Samrat Amitabh. Like in one of my stories, you know, Nishant, there is a king called uh, Samrat Mahendra. Samrat Mahendra. And his mm -hmm. wife's name is uh, Rani um, Rani Rani Anushka uh, Sakshi. Okay, so this was a fiction, you know, I created, okay, for the small children. Uh, I'd just like to go back to Vikas for one question. Okay, Vikas, you joined the St. Michael's in Standard 5. Prior to that, where were you? And how was the transition from where you were to St. Michael's? I mean, like, uh, where were you uh, prior to that? So I was in the um, Delhi Public School, Mathura Road before that. And here okay. also we had an institution as the principal, uh, Mr. Dean Dayal. I don't know whether you've heard of him. Anybody who's uh, been this side in this, this school would this in Delhi would know Dean Dayal because he was a, again a great uh, person as a principal. Mm -hmm. And one thing which I forgot to mention was the elephantine memory which uh, Father Murphy had. Ah. So when I, when I joined him, he remembered my uncle who had, you know, studied with him some 30 years back and, you know, uh, and uh, had a very brief stint with him, but he remembered him in the Xavier's days and all that. So it was amazing. I mean, he was, he could just see somebody and just not forget all his life. Amazing memory he had. 
Thank you, Vikas. Now, with your permission, Prabir and Vikas, I'll go to Amitabh. Yeah, why not? Of course. Okay, of King Amitabh. All right, Samrat Amitabh. Yeah. Right. Uh, Amitabh, just tell us about yourself. In fact, Amitabh and I have a, a very long common, common, common journey. Okay? And that is, we were, before we came to St. Michael's, I as a teacher and Amitabh as a student, I was his teacher in one of a very small school called New St. Xavier's. Okay, in Boring Road, Boring Canal Road. All right. And I still remember. And uh, lots of friends also remember Amitabh as Samraj. So Amitabh, talk about you know, your admission days and you know, the days prior to the, I mean, the, the days just after that. And also, how did you feel you know, coming to St. Michael's after you know, the big, big St. Michael's after that, you know, what we say in Malayalam, kutti kutti, you know, New St. Xavier at that point of time. So thank you, sir. Uh, first, I would like to compliment Nishan for choosing a very appropriate title for this virtual meet, The Incredible St. Michael's. Absolutely. I think with confidence, I can speak and on, on behalf of all our classmates, all, the, all of us who have been fortunate enough to have studied there, that St. Michael's is indeed incredible. It's an incredible school which has turned ordinary, ordinary students in, into incredible Mike lights. Yeah. And I thank Nishan for giving me this opportunity out of such a big galaxy. I can see even, uh, even uh, our seniors who are present here. Out of such a big galaxy of incredible Mike lights for me to speak something at this forum. So I feel honored as well as I feel humbled. Humbled too. You are so, an incredible Mike light too, Amitabh. And I, we are all honored to have you. Absolutely. And uh, sir, it was, it was a great feeling to follow you. And uh, when I saw you in the school, I felt really comfortable. <laughs> so it, that feeling of coming from a small school to a very big school, big classrooms, so many children. So you were the first comforting factor <laughs> in the Thank school. You. All right. And, and, uh, yeah. and the grounding which I got in school, you know, when I, when I joined the Indian Audit and Account Service, I realized the teaching of Mrs. S. Carr. The grounding in, in economics, which has kept me an edge over my colleagues in other services or the, the kind of teaching which she gave, the solid, the solid economics fundamentals which she taught. I, I went on, I pursued economics at my, for my graduation in Hansaraj College. Economics has been become a passion for me, for my continuing education even now. And, uh, and, and uh, to all the teachers, the debt is so much to all the teachers that I can't, I can't, uh, uh, I can't pay so much of uh, regard to everyone. But I, but I would definitely recollect Mrs. Mary Macdonald. Oh, some yes. things with, with some things which she said, like she used to always used to say that there is a difference between a vidwan and a buddhiman, a learned person and a wise person. And it's it's so true in today's world of information overload, and uh, and and a world of fake scholars, and. The, the kind of uh, the kind of grounding which she gave in a moral science session, moral science sessions, that to live by one's values, to always be bold, and her never say die attitude. In fact, because of that never say die attitude, even after failing in my first semester of my audit accounts training, <laughs> I ended up with a silver medal at the end of the final course. So all and. And all the teachers, like uh, later when we, uh, when we interact with Mr. Robin Francis, there was never a dull moment in his physics classes. He, he always used to live up the classes with a subtle sense of humor. Chemistry, organic chemistry was, Mr. Mazumdar made it so simple for us. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, and uh, English language, sir. Mrs. Andy Costa, Mrs. Narang, and you, Amber, sir. Who taught us the nuances of English language made us fluent in a language which we never used to speak at home. English was like a foreign language, but yes. it made us so fluent in English that uh, the credit goes to all of you. But I would like to also recount a very interesting and a uh, memorable incident. Yeah, please go our ahead. Fairy tale, our, our fairy tale journey of St. Michael's had an abrupt ending in class 12. You know, when we, when we were in class 12, we thought we'll have a grand farewell because our school life is going to end and we will move on to a next stage in life, that is the college life. But destiny had something else in store for us. 
so we the, the entire class we ended our school life in suspension and and the story how we got suspended is very interesting during the middle of a physics class two of my friends decided to enter into a chalk fire one was in the front bench the other one was at the last bench and when the last bench one threw a chalk missile to the to the to the boy on the front front bench he he just ducked and chalk went and hit the teacher before we could salvage the situation our class was very close to the principal's chamber <laughs> the teacher rushed out of the classroom and the next moment principal was back in the classroom with the teacher and our school life ended then and there <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a historic moment i'm sure <laughs> okay right thank you amitabh and tell me i mean like uh, were you also a part of any of the games and that used to be held in school and so on that i was a day scholar so so time was a bit yes, of a constraint time would always have to stay yeah. back and i used to go by yeah. bus yeah go yeah by, i used to use the bus transport so okay. i had to come Wonderful. back uh, and i'm 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 very happy that you mentioned you know miss mari mcdonald and especially mrs and the costa because you know like the, who must have taught you in maybe class 5 or 6 at the most i mean as far as the level is concerned and one thing i'll tell you all of you miss mari was a fantastic miss mari was a fantastic geography teacher she was also a fantastic biology teacher and then she had fantastic general knowledge i mean that was tremendous i mean she was quite a package you know uh, and that's you know like that was you know the special thing about miss mari so amitab thank you in fact thank you to all the three gentlemen okay and uh, for sharing with us their pleasant memories of st michaels and now it's all now under 18 stuff is over and adult <laughs> stuff will begin okay and so the adult nishan dayal all right will take it up take it up I, I, uh, sir uh, sorry to interrupt you yeah my stories of under 18 at st michaels would never end without the mention of great rudal ji ah <laughs> Yeah, the the irresistible call of his samosas samosas we used True. to flock together to his window to eat the samosas and, and and you know sir we we didn't know the meaning of brand loyalty at that point of time <laughs> but we were so fiercely loyal you know uh, in our time suddenly the bakipur club they opened a parallel canteen which, which became a competitor to the rudal's canteen yeah and one of our, one of our friends he was so upset with this he didn't like it at all So what he used to do, he used to flick kacha samosas from Bakipur canteen, come to Rudal's canteen, get it fried, and, <laughs> and <eat. laughs> that's one. But Rudal's, but Rudal's samosas are brilliant. Oh uh, no yes, doubt. and in fact, his canteen, you know, became a place uh, for me to counsel some of the, you know, the adolescents you know, who would be in a bit of a trouble, and the trouble would always be NDA. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I used to take them there and get you know a few samosas from Rudal and have a cup of tea and then you know ask them to vent their feelings and their, you know everything and that was you know so thank you thank you for bringing this up Amita okay so yes my guru <laughs> stuff Nishan Dayal thank you thank you sir you have always been incredible too so uh, you know today is a special episode because uh, incredible Michaelites today. we all celebrate the teachers day so after we speak to all of you you would have robin thank you for joining us we'll have mr mazumdar joining us so we will just go go for some memories they want to share you know across all so coming to uh, vikas bhaiya vikas bhaiya is uh, obviously an eminent lawyer was uh, additional solicitor general of india from 2005 to 2008 uh, he was the special prosecutor for the government of delhi in the famous abu sadam trial uh, he has got a list of achieve, achievements what what i can see uh, bhaiya i'll just straight away come to the question the first thing you all want to know is uh, you would like to understand the theory of legislative control of terrorism which you address in the indian parliament to the international delegation post 9/11 so uh, i was asked to talk on uh, how terror can be controlled by a legislation now it was a very very out of the box subject and uh, something which came to my mind i shared with them and 
it was uh, it was very successful and the delegates from all over the all over the world they really appreciated it the concept that i put in was that ultimately when somebody resorts to terror he is not basically wanting to kill those people whom he actually kills or he doesn't want to you know for so for instance if he is uh, wants to bomb the parliament house he has nothing against the parliament house he has nothing against the people who are dying his basic idea is to get publicity now the larger the damage the larger the number of people dying the bigger the publicity so when you had 911 this kind of twin towers falling down uh, that was a huge publicity all over the world and it can never go off uh, people's minds so i i i said that why don't we bring in a law which will bar publicity to an organization which uh, indulges in terror so the idea is that if he knows that if i will not get this publicity then obviously the whole purpose of getting to terror will be completely defeated and uh, you will then want to resort to some other means to pro- propagate uh, whatever you are propagating so whatever be your cause whatever be the purpose for which you uh, do this uh, terror and uh, when i talked about that i also said that there should also in the same law be uh, you know uh, bar of um, uh, 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 people in conflict with crime also to be uh, barred from publicity because the idea is that if you are actually innocent and if you have been framed wrongly then your reputation suffers if you are not innocent and if you are framed and if you get this publicity and if by chance you get ultimately exonerated or if you get acquitted then this use this publicity to become a member of parliament so either way it's uh, not good for the system and uh, i said that this kind of a law is already there today so like for instance in the juvenile justice act if there is a ju- juvenile in conflict with law uh, there is a there is a section which says that you cannot publish the name of the juvenile and his parentage or the place he lives in similarly if there is a victim of a rape victim even a female rape, rape victim her identity cannot be disclosed so there are laws so there is no violation of uh, the uh, fundamental right of you know Uh, free speech and uh, this thing so the the press freedom is not impacted because <clears throat> this law will be in the larger um, uh, public interest and uh, <clears throat> somehow i in fact <clears throat> in fact uh, drafted a law also uh, given it to the government but somehow they have not been able to probably look into it or because if if this really if this really catches on and if all the if every country starts having a law of this kind then you will see the entire kind of um, billions and uh, trillions of money that we are spending on controlling terror will actually get saved and we can use it for more useful purposes because the only purpose so why why does somebody you know um, attack a supreme court or a parliament house not because they have somebody inside the supreme court because the supreme court is a symbol of authority supreme court or the parliament is a symbol of the governments so you attack that or you or you if you kill somebody or large number of people there is a big congregation so purpose is that so that is what i i very strongly feel even today that if we are uh, able to bring in a law of this kind of course it will have to be very fine tuned because uh, there will be uh, areas where there will be some uh, publicity which may be required so for instance if how many people have died that will have to be shown but who who did it maybe the name is shown but which organization he belongs to or what does that organization you know want to do uh, or what is the objective of that organization that can be bad i i personally feel and now terror prior to 911 terror used to be you know um, a, a terrorist for me could be a freedom fighter for you but now globally there is a uniformity on what terror is now because once it happened in the us <coughs> then there is some kind of a global acceptance on what can be said to be terror so now that that clarity is there if this law were to be enacted i i i personally feel that uh, in fact i had a discussion with mr chidambaram also when he was home minister he was also very keen so whoever talks to me on this uh, it, it gets uh, very um, you know convinced but somehow the, this uh, has not you know gone forward and uh, this is something which is very close to my heart i'm i i i created a blog also for that and i have been writing articles also on this on on several newspapers and magazines and they've all been printed but somehow it's not gone beyond that superb yeah. but it's really a proud feel because uh, it's a very critical issue and uh, you know well delivered superb 
uh, i will so yeah, i'll come back to you again so i'll go to uh, prabir here so prabir ja obviously uh, it's extremely proud to you know talk about that prabir ji has got uh, a 550 100000 followers at linkedin so which is uh, you know not small which is significantly high brilliant uh, an alumni of uh, st stephen college and exelrai and former ceo of prabir ji people's advisory he has had hr at uh, dr reddy tata motors tipla and also featured as the list of most admired hr professional in india and recipient of multiple awards uh, uh, he was also named the digital digitalist of the year by staff mail fantastic way i can't i can't finish the the accolades you have uh, achieved all across fantastic yeah just to you know come to the the right point the only the one of the biggest uh, you know proud feeling we have is you are the only indian who have headed hr for two fortune 500 companies which is again huge so we would like to understand this and uh, if you can share the perspective on the biggest transformers changes that you have seen of the nations please thank you thank you nishant so kind of you uh, yeah I, i think god has been very kind and benevolent so after a decade in the civil service and uh, i did a full time two year mba at excelr i i for a poor hr handling of my reimbursement claims i quit the civil service so you know i always have lived a life of convictions not consequences i don't know how much money i i lost on the way but yeah i sleep well uh, i i moved to the corporate sector and uh, you talked about two fortune 500 uh, companies so yes i was the hr head of tata motors and i was the group chro for mukesh ambani's reliance you know across yeah. oil gas telecom sports television geo retail whatever else and uh, and uh, you know i have uh, in my career been very actively involved and you know each one seeks a passion and purpose and for me it's about how do you transform companies how do you transform leaders and how do you transform uh, cultures of organizations and these are massive companies they are global companies and uh, and uh, my own perspective and i've done my share in the civil service i was always a little so what sir i uh, amber sir i don't do in st michaels i did professionally i have been the angry young man continue to do uh, that right now so i guess all that pent up reserved uh, emotion was left for my profession so you know people do call me the uh, the bang or the sachin tendulkar of hr or whatever else but uh, nishant i think couple of uh, uh, hooks to hang thoughts on i won't get into details because there are many stories you know a very popular one was how did you convince mr bani to move to a five day week which you know almost everyone seems to ask me or why did you leave from tatas and work for reliance and why did you leave the government and join uh, uh, the civil, uh, the uh, corporate sector three four key hooks that i find and today in my advisory role i advise startups i advise still large companies multinational companies and i find that uh, the challenge i see almost all across including the government i also sit on rbi's advisory board and it's so whether it's the government it's it's uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, psus or it's the corporate world i think the biggest challenge to change or or reinvention is we are trying to solve what i call a pediatric problem with a geriatric solution you know we are trying to see the new age and i can see amber sir smiles so the literature in me has not gone away so uh, but but it captures the essence that you know it's a new age problem but we are trying to see it with a 1970 or 80 or 90 uh, lens it will never work right and uh, you are basically advising uh, uh, companies or you've been part of the management team where you're advising people who are really the who's who right when you tell mr ambani to change policies or to change programs you know it's very difficult because uh, what has got success so far is almost what you are wanting them to repudiate because i believe it's outlived its its quota of prescription right and i'm talking about it globally i see this problem the other challenge that i see is that in my tell clients that be proud of your past but never become a prisoner of your legacy and you know this is a huge trap that companies you know so you want to be a great car maker but you want to still flog the car agenda with a selling the truck uh, mindset it will never work it will never work 
right? So how do you tell the Tatars that, you know, you've got to reinvent and you've got to understand consumer behavior more than, engin than engineering, which has outlived its purpose. So to me, the issue and where I work and where I have worked and some bit of the reputation I've acquired is how do you help companies and their leadership get to think different? So I work at the confluence of strategy and organization, right? And it is about helping organizations either get to relevance or stay relevant or create impact. So if you're advising a startup, which is wanting to threaten and question an established order, very bright young uh, IITians, right? And you're telling them that, you know, how do you actually build an institution? Because before you realize it'll be a certain scale and size and you're an entrepreneur yourself. So I can tell you that before you realize you become big, but you've got to change your batting mix. You've got to change your bowling mix. And therefore, this entire dimension of talent, leadership, culture, apart from the hard things around organization, architecture, etc., is very complex. And, you know, my experience has been most leaders are left brain biased. So they understand the math, they understand the numbers, they understand the reward uh, metrics, but they don't understand enough the softer dimensions and people or consumers. So in some ways, your consumer psychology and the human psychology needs to get bridged. So that's the space in which I try to help companies move from good or great to still higher greatness, because I think uh, there's a huge opportunity and possibility across scale, size, and uh, uh, tenure of organizations. But unfortunately, uh, the big elephants take more time to move. The nimble ones are able to kind of be more amoebic in their moves. Superb, yeah. fantastic. Uh, let me quickly, you know, go to Amita Bhaiya. So Amita Prashad, 1990 batch, uh, IAAS. Uh, he was the director on, in the office of principal director commercial audit and uh, was supervising Delhi Metro, BHEL, NTPC, and Power Grid, and was director of international relations, Goodco as well, uh, and office of the CAG in India. Uh, he was the uh, OSD PS Minister of Coal, and uh, he has been taking lectures in financial management at Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy in Masuri as well. So fantastic. So we have got another performer. Today is the day of performers. I'm so happy that all the incredible night lights we are having today, they are outperformed. Uh, awesome. Superb. So Amitabh, I'll straight come to you, share some interesting episodes of a service life. Thank you, Nishant. Uh, I would start uh, from Bangalore. You know, Saint, uh, first of all, I would say St. Michael's. Today, what I am, I am a man because of St. Michael's. And very, very early on in life, on the play fields of St. Michael's, we learned to be a team player. And that team spirit has helped me achieve milestones in my professional career. So, Coming back to my first posting, I was assistant AG pension in the accountant general's office in Bangalore. And you know, it was, it used to be so heartbreaking. I used to be so pained seeing pensioners after years of dedicated service at the receiving end of the system. So I took it as a challenge and Michael's taught me not to be a status quoist, be an agent of change always. So I took it as a challenge and decided to make a difference. I will not claim that I got it brick and I left it as a shining marble. But of course, we made some, I made it more transparent, more responsive, and more functional. And you know, the, in, in public life, the news travels, the word travels. So at a very young age, I was invited to the committee room of Vidhan Soda to make a presentation before the senior principal secretaries and secretaries of government of Karnataka, which I could do because I think I am from St. Michael's. Then audit, you know, audit comes at a stage after planning and implementation is done. And we have a solemn responsibility to report to the parliament and to the state legislature and ensuring accountability and transparency in the system. And again, I have been lucky to be part of audit officials, proactive audit officials, to make recommendations to governments at the state and the center on very citizen-centric issues, like say midday meal scheme, distribution of flood relief, distribution of old age pension, or 
say construction of road and even to complex topics like say ppp or uh, or issuance of an ipo and audit indirectly you know it the the amount of systems system improvements which it brings about gives you immense job satisfaction it has given me immense job satisfaction because systems improvement always has a multiplier effect in improving the quality of lives of the people and whenever we get applauded i think i have paid a part of my debt to the teachers of st michael's well said yeah. superb uh, very well said uh, i will I'll again come to you prabir bhai you would like to also understand uh, you know uh, in 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 perspective with all the alumni who are watching you and you know would like to understand quite a few things uh, what quick mantras could you share with our alumni uh, for their own career successes because now you are also uh, you know uh, advising a lot of people a lot of companies on to you know growth path so we would like to uh, hear that from you as well thank you uh, yeah so coaching uh, people and on uh, careers uh, whether they are youngsters or they are chief executives has been part of my bread and butter once i quit the civil service and a uh, couple of things you know when i look back and including i remember some of the career talks we would have in st michaels we did have a few people come in i think as a concept it was great but today when i look at it it's very dated because you know it still reinforces the same stereotypes there are these two three four kinds of jobs uh, i think uh, and i i had now patented a, quite a few interventions so there's something i say is design your careers don't plan your careers you know i think the tragedy of uh, uh, human kind is that they are they think about their degrees their uh, education streams and therefore the career uh, options nothing wrong with it in a very status quoist world it made sense but today i believe you design your careers and you need to understand first what are your deeply embedded life interests what you study what you did not i as i said i always wanted to be a civil servant when i left school and 10 years later i quit the civil service which for a bihari you can understand my you know my parents and my in laws everyone was livid that what have you done so i think it's important understand yourself it's the biggest career tip that i can give you the second that i think is very important is as i see the world of uh, tomorrow you must be very comfortable with gray and ambiguity people struggle with gray they like it black or white but that is not uh, where the new age careers will uh, take you in fact i believe the next big wave of career possibilities and people like you are walking that in some way are going to be at the on the fringes not at the end of the tunnel and i think this is a big change that has happened i mean e- even in the government i have hired people out of the civil service because i was a product of that and i know there are bright guys there but most people in the corporate sector would not look at talent catchments which are exist there but i tell individuals is why do you not get out of your comfort zone change industries change functions change geographies do something that you've never done so essentially nishan because i can go on and on on this is i believe people need to understand that careers is not a string of titles that i joined in my junior time scale finally retired as secretary to government of india so i had a great career i'm sorry you may have had what the world may think is a great career but it's the same job you are doing and the jobs are getting an institute elevation careers today are all about series of experiences where you are either creating greater impact or you are dealing with greater complexity so there's a x y uh, uh, axis right complexity uncertainty matrix and you must always force yourself to be doing something like i'm trying to be an entrepreneur in my space of advisory i mean i gave up a mighty uh, a compensated job right to try my hand you, i don't earn the money i was earning a year back but the fact is unless you pay play on different turfs and hit a century right so you play in different companies you don't understand that industry learn fast learn succeed you build a reputation so i'll end by saying actually more than building your resume build your reputation because your reputation precedes your resume and that is one of the biggest things that you know should i advise new age career thinking as the world of opportunities are immense even in covid times i believe there are such exciting opportunities but people are so closed they want to play safe so that won't happen ishant in the world of tomorrow no wonder you have got 5 and 1/2 lakh followers <laughs> fantastic pravin bhai so let me again go to you know amitabh bhai and understand 
about uh, you you worked as director of international relations can you explain the role of ians and also i would like to understand uh, when you were the director audit for indian audit office at the high commission of india in london as well can you just explain both please yeah thank you nishant uh, i would but uh, i would like to use this platform to say that the indian audit and account service is internationally recognized and well known for its competence and professionalism in 2009 when i was uh, prematurely transferred and made director ir director international relations i was given an uphill challenging task to prepare the financial and technical bid for the external auditorship of world food program the stakes were very high the time was very short and the then cag jokingly told me that if we are going to lose the bid then i would my next destination would be kalapani but we could manage to pull it through and not only the world food program we won two more bids in our during my tenure that is of the world intellectual property organization and the international atomic energy agency the iaea in fact the contest was so tiff in wipo the world intellectual property organization that we defeated nao uk the national audit office of uk despite the fact that their financial bid was much favorable than ours and it was a historic moment in the history of wipo because we were the first external auditors from the developing world till till india became a external auditor before that only auditors from the developing for the from the developed countries were were auditing wipo so that was a very historic moment one another unique uh, assignment which we got uh, during my tenure was the management assessment of international thermonuclear experimental reactor iter which is coming up in cadrash in france which iter too was being done by large private sector consulting firms for the first time it was given to a multidisciplinary team of ians officials and scientists from the department of atomic energy i was lucky that i was part of preparing the proposal we got it we got the assignment and also i was part of the member of this team so coming back to london because i because we won all these bits so the specter of kala pani melted away and my next posting was london fantastic nice very nice and, very nice. and uh, you know nishan the, the most memorable part of my london posting is that during my visit to paris with another fellow mike light we could have a photograph under the statue of saint michael's which is there on my facebook <laughs> oh lovely so, so that is the uh, that is one of the most memorable but uh, 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 part of my london posting apart from that i am always interested in you know building up uh, knowledge and capability i have been as as you know i have been teaching <coughs> students in uh, during foundation course in masuri or in the ians academy in shimla so out of their intellectual curiosity i i i have decided to further increase my learning in the area of corruption and money laundering because you know corruption is the biggest challenge to governance so i have joined a masters degree in uh, in anti corruption and compliance from the international anti corruption academy vienna so as pravish pravish jha was sir was saying continuing education is is, is the motivation which keeps us all alive and st michael's has played a very major role into 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 all of us into all that superb great to hear from you here yeah? fantastic now i'm coming to the sensation of few months not one month few months because unfortunately when i was doing the second webinar of incredible michaelite that was 14th of june when we suddenly before i was about to start the 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 show we got the sad news of sushant singh rajput uh, you know death and uh, uh, we are all very proud because uh, to the talent of bihar someone who is actually doing justice or trying to get something extremely good to these people is is vikas bhaiya so vikas bhaiya recently represented the complaint of sushant singh rajput mysterious death before the supreme court which resulted into a landmark judgment on a law related to transfer to a criminal case 
not going to the depth of it, but because Sushant was one of the talents of Bihar, and you being a Michaelite, chasing it uh, very well uh, as a counter to them, you are also looking into it. Bhaiya, yeah, we would just like to have an overview of uh, the entire thing because you are seen on TV every day now. So every day in the same position. So we, from the from the angle of incredible Michaelites, would like to know a few things about this. Well, uh, this was a very uh, it was a very difficultly poised case when it came to me. So when yeah. the father contacted me uh, after about one month of his death, and uh, Bombay police was going all over and uh, not doing what uh, the family expected them to do because they had given a complaint in February. And uh, they didn't look into it, and uh, then the person died, and they were still not looking into it. They were, you know, using this uh, death to um, bring in everybody from the film industry, and you know, question them for I don't know what kind of probe. Because under the CRPC, you can't do an investigation without registering an FIR. So no FIR was registered by Mumbai, and still uh, this unending uh, sort of uh, investigation, so-called investigation, was going on. So it is at that time when they came to me. So the options were either we go back to the Mumbai police and, and give a formal complaint or we ask for a CBI inquiry directly by going to some constitutional court or we go to Patna. So this Patna angle came to my mind. I said that is one option which is open to us because if you go back to Mumbai police, they will close this case also because if the police does not want to investigate something, it is impossible for anybody to force the police to investigate. So, so for instance, if you're doing an uh, uh, interrogation and if you don't ask the right questions, you'll obviously not get the right answers. So if you don't want to do it, if you want to look, if you want to cover up something, there is no way you can force because ultimately investigation has to be done by them. So we decided to go to Patna. Now that was a huge challenge. We chan uh, you know, panelist after panelist on TV, you know, said that what, what nonsense, Patna has no jurisdiction, you know, top minds, criminal minds. Uh, public prosecutors and uh, senior lawyers, former DGs. In fact, I had a, a tip with uh, Mr. Uh, Yashwardhan Azad, our senior from school. We were together on CNN one day and uh, he made the mistake of quoting me that Vikas knows that Patna doesn't have jurisdiction. I said, please don't, say, please don't use my mouth. If you want to say something, say it on your own. So when he still, you know, uh, was um, uh, not ready to listen, I had to tell on the show that it's sad that a, a retired DG doesn't know the CRPC and he was very livid. Of course, that was on the show next day, of course, we talked and we you know, sort of uh, covered it up. But uh, this, this getting this case registered in Patna was a very big challenge because the DG Bihar also uh, was not you know aware whether this case could be registered at all or not. So I had to tell him the provisions of the CRPC, the judgments which are you know uh, already there which, uh, which uh, you know, decide this uh, uh, jurisdiction angle. But uh, once the investigation started and uh, we realized that uh, Patna police is not getting any cooperation from Mumbai police, it is at that stage that I, uh, you know, advised the family that we should uh, go for CBI. Because the CM had already promised that if the family wants, we give it to CBI. So before the Supreme Court could hear the matter, the matter had already been referred to the CBI. And the idea was that at least CBI, they will not be able to uh, not cooperate. Uh, they will have to cooperate with the CBI. And uh, that is how now things are progressing very fast. Uh, unfortunately, I can't talk a lot of things which I know about the investigation because it's not proper. But um, very soon you will get some uh, very big news. And the way that the drug angle has come out will only show that what all the Mumbai police was trying to hide. I mean, there's something very, very unholy there. Uh, with the Mumbai police and uh, the culprits involved in this case, so um, uh, it was a it was a very difficult challenge. And uh, finally, when the judgment of the Supreme Court came, and every argument of mine, every argument of mine was accepted, and it's a very landmark. Judge. Incidentally, Justice Rishikesh Roy. Of course, I never met him in school there. Incidentally, Justice Rishikesh Roy, who wrote the judgment, he was with me in my class in uh, DPS, Mathuram. Yeah, okay. Same batch. But of course, I didn't know him from then. It is only somebody who told me. Another friend who's a batchmate from that school, he said uh, Rishikesh Shavar was also there. 
in that school and uh, of course i came to know all that later but he also was so it's a it's a it has been a uh, this, this particular case uh, i would say i don't think in the independent india there has been so much of uh, publicity in any one case and the way this has been now converted into a movement and way all over the world you are having billboards in california and australia in england and you know almost everywhere you are having people wanting to support justice for sushant and uh, the kind of uh, persona that he was also probably <clears throat> now now today the situation is that now uh, even if i don't give any bite to any uh, camera people or any channel they still keeps uh, waiting whole day outside my office <laughs> that the hope that i will agree to give a bite at some point of time but i feel that and when the investigation is going on it's not proper for me to keep commenting on Thank what you. is happening in the investigation and we should let them go i am extremely thankful bhaiya for sharing so much on this platform and 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 once again we are all very proud of you thank you bhaiya so just uh, you know uh, the last part of the incredible michaelites we go to each michaelite to say one word one line on uh, the alumni and incredible michaelites on a whole before we welcome our teachers to celebrate small teachers day with all of you together so i'll just uh, go to prabir bhaiya first Ah, uh, Prabir, your 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 one liner to our alumni and incredible Michaelites, please. Uh, so, Nishant, I think every Michaelite is incredible, right? So, uh, some will come on your show, some will not come on your show, but I think uh, they are incredible. I think the grounding that school gave us, I think, when we say God and country, in many ways, in all our lines, and I was listening to what. Amitabh said what uh, Vikas Singh said. Somewhere we are all grounded because of that value, and you know everything else you can trade, but the values and the sense of of purpose and righteousness that that continue to go in what we do because there are struggles, there are enough pressures, and all of us in our lives have had right. And uh, just keep that faith and let's stay true to that conscience that Saint Michael's uh, created in us. उटलोरिशन but i can imagine the great person personality he must have been and you know above all it is that overwhelming feeling of walking under the shadows of the great intellectual giants the great formidable minds who have enriched the life of communities in many ways men who have made history and who have become a part of history so i would like to thank st michael's for for, for everything thank you bhaiya uh vikas bhaiya well i firstly i must uh, welcome robin sir uh, robin sir has taught us so, sir so, uh, welcome to the uh, program i don't know whether you were watching this whole show or not but uh, uh, nice to see you sir uh, i will say and i agree entirely with amitabh that uh, this is one school you know i i in our childhood there used to be uh, some cousins studying at uh, doon school and they used to feel that they were privileged etc but i have always felt this that our school is probably one of the best in the country for sure one of the best in the country for sure and it has really really shaped all of us i mean what is and yeah they all of all of them were each one great experience in the school and we all cherish in fact i have made a batch of uh, in our 75 batch i made a whatsapp group and now i have been able to connect to about 40 50 people globally i mean they are all over the world and i had uh, we did um, uh, this thing our 45 years we did at the school and we are hoping to do 50 years uh, very soon of passing out from uh, michaels i think it's a, it's it's been a great journey uh, studying there and uh, and evolving to what we are today 
Chant, may I make one suggestion? One, one small suggestion uh, yeah. as I was listening. Like I never knew Mr. Vikas Singh is from St. Michael's. You know, as generations and almost every five, seven years is a generation shift because then you don't know uh, people. If uh, as part of this exercise, one can just populate, you know, the kind of people and you discover them. You know, they could be almost intergenerational. They could be in different walks of life. I think for both current students and also for alumni, it's a great sense of, of pride. It's, uh, so, you know, people who are maybe five years uh, ahead of you, you know, uh, but yes. uh, and I've been following your show and uh, some I knew. I mean, some uh, were during my broad uh, uh, time, uh, but some were not. And I think if we can just populate that, we will not lose the uh, because what legacy the school has, what, uh, you know, and uh, I will tell you very honestly that uh, I was telling this to my wife, that if I were to just remove St. Michael's or Patna from it, and I were to just get you to listen to tapes and the wisdom and perspective of all the panelists over all the last few weeks we've heard, I can tell you, and this is my dhanda, you know, I, I look for talent, I, I hire talent, I assess talent. It is world class. It is world class. And uh, it's just an, a little understated a story. And hopefully... Uh, what Mr. Vikas Singh is saying that, you know, across the world, if we are able to just get that little uh, 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 leg up, it will do a lot of... Yeah, in fact, uh, Prabir, uh, Prabir, uh, Prabir, just I'm one... Actually, uh, you know, asking my students of the various schools, you know, where I was the principal, and I've been sending them, you know, the link and the YouTube thing, so that, you know, they can watch, they can watch the program. I write, okay, okay it's, it's one hour, you watch it in two or three installments if you feel like, but do watch... It because it's going to be a lesson for you. And, you know, and they revert back to me saying, wow, it is, I mean, it is. that's it. So, you know, I have to, in my own humble way, I've tried to do exactly Excellent. what you have, you know, just now recommended and said, yes. Very you true. know, uh, on, on this, uh, Nishan, there is actually, I feel that our school on the alumni front has somehow not been able to galvanize uh, the alumni so well as, as probably, you know, the Mayo College does or the Doom School does. Correct. Our alumni is, uh, is quite a scattered lot, and you know, we we are we not not much effort is uh, made to you know sort of get the alumni together. I don't know who should do it or how it should be done, but uh, definitely yeah. this is a good way to do it. The way what you started now, but probably yeah. we can think something else. Probably something can be done at the school level because that's the fulcrum from where this whole thing can be, you know, sort of controlled. Very true. As, as, as we are talking. Up, you will be the alumni event manager, okay, <laughs> apart from your spots. Yes, yes. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So actually, as we are talking on this, I got a call from someone from UCLA who saw a few of our episodes and they were thrilled. They said, you know, this is some unique concept. Where did you thought from? You know, and I was like, we, we had a chat. And now they are trying to do a similar kind of thing what we have always started. But, you know, we all, we all say that it's all about 1858. 1857, it was the revolt of <laughs> 1857 and 1858 school started. So, uh, this was an incredible uh, session altogether because we had, because we are from 1975, the 70s, the 80s were Prabir Jha, 83, 85. And 90s as well, so Amitabh Prashad. So we were spread across three different decades. So fantastic. Now, towards the end of the show, today being the special episodes, we are having three of our teachers who are going to be here with us, sharing their memories of as a teacher in school to celebrate the Teacher's Day, which eventually happened yesterday. So, welcome Robin, thank you sir. Pranam. Pranam sir. Sir, mute app. Uh, and and, and Madhundar sir, Pranam. Welcome. Uh, Pranam. Thank you. Very happy to see all the people on the laptop. I'm seeing Vikas after 45 years. Exactly. <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> you were in candy standard in 74. Okay, yes. I have your photograph here. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, sir, ka, sir ka consistency hai. Every I, episode, I got, he will I, have the photo of the Michaelite appearing here. Yes, is, I have all. He is out of the world. Yes. Because I know your house number, B40. Is it okay? B50. 50 or 50? B50. 
be 50 okay because my daughter in law of her same area that is a defense colony she okay. is she is from uh, c90 Okay, very okay. nice. See, okay. Robin, sir, Robin, sir, school ka, koi memory memory hai. Hai. Yes. My, my hobby is to give the shock. A little shock. I am calling all of them, line up, and I just tell them, I'm going to, you can go to hear music through the year, but you have to hold these, these two lines to what you call. To uh, props, then I should give them shock. Okay, <laughs> ten thousand words. I put all down, all the sides. And then I show them lots of experiment because I was teaching physics. I will not teach physics without experiment. Demonstration was the must because I used to tell them stories also. The stories. About the scientists and all, what they did and all. So that I used, that was my hobby to attract them. Sometimes they will tell me, sir, we don't want to study today. Uh, okay, what do you want? Sir, give me a just sing a song. That to sing also. I should dance also. Because they want to make them make them relax completely. Then I used to teach them. But they to they have to pay attention to my classes. That was I was really very fortunate to have those kinds of brilliant boys of India, like uh, yes. uh, and smart. Now change to Amitabh. I will call him smart. Smart change to Amitabh. Yes, uh, that is that I work with Mother Rekhaja in the school, uh, and I yes, go to his uh, house also to meet his father in Puthakolni. जी सर एकदम सही आप याद कर रहे हैं एकदम सही <laughs> एकदम सही सर I know every incident all the days to call me most of the students to call me boss because you know sometimes I prefer because you are smoking they will not call me sir because boss for this and that the sir we have smoke today yeah, that side we are coming late. Just tell father because that he was in the lab doing some experiment. I have to tell lies. Sir, if you have to connect with the sir, you can connect with the 80 and 90 and the 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 Mazumdar Sarka or Ambar Sarka is pura overview. Hai. Okay. Okay, okay. So we just we just have a look on this, sir. Please. Ah, so, Sarkari. Very nice. Yes. Huh? I see very nice. I've got the photograph. All this. <laughs> How do you look at all this? All the photographs are mine. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Ishwaran? Mrs. Ishwaran. Uh, Correct. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Thomas yeah. is here. Thomas and all. Correct. Yes. Uh, yes, mm. I used to I used to dance Thomas used to teach us chemistry, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, wow. Ambar sir is here, sitting, squatting there. Physics and chemistry together. Sir, you yes. are sitting chemistry. You are just sitting there. Okay, Mishra sir is also giving you. Hmm. Yes, Mishra, right. How did you say that? Sir, is Andy Costa also? Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Next. Sir, this is a young angry man. It's a look of cinema. It's a look of cinema. Sir, I like it. I like it. Sir, I like it. 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 मैं चाहो तो कोई बात नहीं तुम किसी और को चाहोगे तो मुश्किल होगी वाह वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट 
ये मजेदार सर का है तीस सर लग गया ये जानने में कि आपका नाम रविंद्र नाथ थनोए मजेदार है ओके केमिस्ट्री केमिस्ट्री लैब सर बताइए इसके बारे में सर कहाँ गए मजेदार सर से बोले ना सर फुट पुराने फोटो सर में नेक्स्ट सर बताइए इसके बारे में इतना अच्छा फोटो सब सर माय गॉड माय गॉड माय गॉड ये तो सर वील हैव टू आस्क यू अबाउट योर सोशल्स नाउ आफ्टर वी सी दैट सर पटना में इसको बोलता है कि चॉकलेट की हीरो है दिस हैज सो मेनी फैमिलियर फेसेस मिस्टर लाल आई सी ऑरेंज के और क्या हो सकता है एस एस लाल या करेक्ट करेक्ट यस सिटी ऑगस्टिन आई कैन सी हिम लेट्स एक्चुअली राज सर इज ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड मिस सोनिया पुरी एक वो हमारे म्यूजिक टीचर थे क्या नाम था शफी नाम था क्या नाम था राइट साइड में मिस शोभना वो नास्कर साहब भी है नास्कर सर हाँ हाँ बाजल भी है इस डेट मिस्टर लाल राइट एट द बैक या ही इस डेट एट द बैक बाजल मिस्टर रॉकी डिकास्ट मिस्टर साइमन एंटनी पीटी एंड गेम्स टीचर फिलिप म्यूजिक वाले हाँ फिलिप जेकब की बगल में शराफत अली अक्सर भी है अक्सर भी है वेरी गुड एम चौक से मारना राज सर यूज टू हिट अस विद दैट चौक यस Now I was very fortunate once. Mr. Thomas and Mr. Raj had dropped in to say hello to me in my office in Hyderabad. Okay. It was so nice. Both of them came together, two old <laughs> teachers, and so so nice. Yeah. अच्छा अंबर सर का style देखिए इसमें right side में. Right. Sir, you cannot you cannot miss a moment of style. That's calf one, ah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, lovely, lovely pictures. Right. Uh, and through these photos, and you know, on behalf of all the students, past, present, you know, again, our gratitude and our uh, uh, full thanks to all our uh, teachers. Three of you are with us, and uh, yes. thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Mazumdar sir, आप अपना एक एक school का memory share करिए हम लोग के साथ. Sir है? हम्म है. हाँ. सर एक स्कूल का मेमोरी शेयर कीजिए हम लोग के साथ ओके ऑडिबल सर अंबर सर हाँ यस 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 नमस्कार सर अंबर सर एम आई ऑडिबल यस यू आर यस सर एक्चुअली व्हेन आई ज्वाइन व्हेन आई ज्वाइन सेंट माइकल से 1985 It was uh, the, my first batch was ICSC batch, so that was uh, Shaibal Guha, Vishal Singh, all that Shishik Shivastava, all of that there. Now uh, I had to I had to I had to complete their chemistry syllabus. I joined in the month of September, and they are uh, they will be having their exams in January. So. i used to take two classes together two periods together and from the and from the last year that is uh, from the last actually uh, the students used to say a kya table they put their mouth they used to put their mouth below the bench and i bench and they used to say a kya ho raha hai Now you know the first batch when in the practical examination uh, is what happened that Charlie got nervous during the practical examination. So it was my first batch. So I also got nervous. I immediately, first thing, immediately sent coffee 
uh, hot milk, snacks, everything to energize, to give him energy. So it was a nice experience. And one more thing I remember that uh, one, uh, one boy asked me, Sir, in the chemistry exams, do you, I could know, yes, sir, you have done so. Why? Show me. Now, I have given a question. Write, an, write, the name of, write the name of the first member of the alkene series. He had written ethane, E T H A N E. It will be ethene. So, I told, <laughs> it is wrong. He told that, sir, only E is the by A. What is wrong in it? <laughs> Super. Yeah, there are some experiences. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, you know, nice. So many. Uh, nice. So many experiences are there. Uh, Nishant was Nishant was as usual a naughty. Uh, is <laughs> moving the corridor and uh, uh, for getting samosas and all. I still remember all those things. <laughs> Sir, we, we still remember that we were going to tuition and sir, there was a cup of two biscuits and one chai cup. And we were watching two biscuits for two hours. Because sir, nobody didn't drink. Two biscuits were cup. Sir, it was a great memory, sir. Ambar, sir, now one story from you, please. Okay. Uh, you see, this is, you know, I, I'm very blessed to have had you know, these incredible Mike lights as my classmates, as my schoolmates, okay? And then, of course, as my students, all right? So, and I'm very blessed to be a co-alumnus of all of you, okay? Apart from being a teacher. Yeah. I mean, that's where, that's you know... True. You're different, I, yeah? I'm a bit, yeah, I'm a bit special in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll share with you one memory of, you know, which must have come. I was very young. I was, you know, I was a young teacher, it was in 1985, and it was class nine. And the problem was suddenly, and I was not the class teacher of that class. And suddenly, you know, before any exam, seven or eight children's notebooks, okay, of the good children used to disappear okay, before the exams. All right. And this was happening on a regular basis. So Mr. Raj came and told me, okay, look, just try and find out the class teacher, unfortunately, has not been able to. So I said, I'll try, but I may not succeed. Because one thing is very clear that the boy is doing it for attention seeking. Because he won't need eight, eight, nine notebooks. He'll need only one if he has to copy notes and then learn. So I announced in the class that, look, if you, you know, please do it, return the notebooks. Nobody will come to know about it. And then, you know, I realized that when you the best form of making a student realize is when the teacher gives himself or herself a punishment for a mistake that his student has done. And I still remember my eldest son was very young at that time, maybe just one year old or something. And my wife was also very young and, and both my parents you know, were working. So I announced in the class, okay, look, I have to motorcycle down to Kagal. All right. And my wife needs me very badly for a bit of a, you know, a respite. Uh, you know, for the whole day because I have to, you know, hold my son. And at, by 2.30, I should be home. But I won't be staying home. I will be staying in the staff room doing correction till 4 o'clock. And I told my principal, Father Augustine, okay, I will tell the class that I'm not going to reveal the name of the student if that student comes, if my experiment is successful. And I started doing that, you know, and I told my wife, thanks, to her for cooperating and I stayed back after school everybody used to go and I stayed till about 4 4 30 hoping that this boy whoever he is would come keep those notebooks and maybe you know then one day I said okay you don't have to even come and you know show me your face if you want you can just keep those notebooks and then go away I mean even this would be a bit of a success you won't believe me Last day of the week, and I said it will be only for a week. Last day of the week, you know, I got a knock. All right, on the staff room uh, door. And I rushed out and I saw the notebooks were there and there was nobody there. And then 
just kept on, you know, uh, just uh, inside the notebook on top was, I'm sorry, sir, and his name. Okay. Wow. And of course, he was a 9B. Okay, that was the class I was dealing with now. And then, you know, I, next class, I just said, thank you, I've got it. Okay. And obviously, boys would be boys. They started looking, you know, here and there, who was it? I said, no, that's a pact between him and me. Then I went to Father Augustine. And Father Augustine said, you know, this was the great part of it. He said, you had made a promise not to even tell me the name. Okay. So please keep your promise. Wow. And I kept my promise. Father Augustine <coughs> helped me to keep the promise. And even till today, I keep that promise. That boy is with me on Facebook. He's very well settled in life. Okay. And, uh, you know, and he, he just returned the notebook. And then when I met him, he said, sir, you were punishing yourself and your whole family because of my mistake. I said, yes. And, and I said, okay, you just needed a bit of attention. I think you were not getting that. Okay. Why didn't you tell me a little earlier? We would have just gone and have some samosas in Rudolph's canteen, you know, and we would have had a great time. Okay. And that is that. I mean, this was my first experiment, Super. you know. Lovely story. I must have observed Lovely. the Super. Harlands and the Clearies and the Zebers and the Mahonies and so on. And it was, you know, successful. And that held me in good stead later on when the kids of today became a lot more adventurous, you know, and in DPS. So that was, you know, something which I, I'll never forget. And it's a secret Fantastic. between him and me even till today. And Father Ragastin never asks the name even today. So that was awesome. my awesome. wonderful story. Super. I, just, I would Super. share this on Teacher's Day. So, so thank you and happy Teacher's Day to all of you, sir. You. Robin, sir, Bhagavan, sir, Amban, sir. Uh, and we come to the end of this uh, webinar 11 uh, as, as a, as a methodology. Be webinar 12 is on 27th of September and we are going to have Dr. Arun Chaudhary 1969. We are going to have Mr. Jitendra Singh 1975 and Mr. Manoj Singh 1983. So stay tuned for more incredible mic lights. More Rudal Samosa, but Amitabh Bhaiya, Rudal Samosa has to be some Ladai with the Cholas. Without Chola, no Samosa. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nishant. Arun Chaudhary played a historic role in the one act. Because I like to have your phone number. I will send, sir. I will send, sir. I will get it. Because I will send this photo. I will send it, sir. Lovely seeing you, sir. Robin Francis, sir. Thank you so much. It was so good. I was very glad. Thank you so much, sir. Keep blessing us. Both salutations to each one of the mic lights. And indeed. Okay, okay. God bless you. Thank you so God much. You. A wonderful colleague, uh, Mr. Mazumdar, always Thanks, a friend, Dada. Thank you. And Nishant, thank you. Nishant, you're doing a lot of work. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you